really never meant for things to be this way. We just flew too close to the sun, you know? I don't think I understood when I joined this group just how much my life would spiral out of control. It wasn't just me changing or the group or even the university. It was, I don't know. It's like how we were affected everything, like the space-time continuum or something. I think looking back, if I knew things would be this way, I'd love to say I wouldn't have joined, or everything would be different, but that's the thing about Fishbowl. It's inevitable. At the end of the day, you realize really quickly in this group that you can't control it. You just, you can't control what it does to people. Can you just uh, start from the beginning? How did this all happen? Um, I joined fall semester of my freshman year, and it was exciting. You know, I'd never done comedy before, and everyone just seemed so silly, <laughs> so dangerous. People think that comedy is about being funny. I thought comedy was about being funny, but really, in my experience, it's all about sex appeal. Looking back, I did think it was weird that I had to bring three different headshots to my callback. See, there was happy, serious, and cowboy. When you look at the senior group, we all sort of bring a different brand of sex appeal. I think that's why we've become so undeniable. Carly appeals to like 30 year olds who watch The Sopranos and need to learn what love is, while Audrey sort of covers the demographic of people with a king princess fetish. I mean, of course everyone in Fishbowl is wildly attractive, but over time we just realized that the six of us were the Beyonce of Fishbowl's Destiny's Child. Sometimes it was hard for us to finish a show because instead of putting actual suggestions, people would put their phone numbers. Like, call me, I'm obsessed with you, Sarah Lett, stop 937. I mean, sorry, sorry Sarah, I love you, but... It's not reciprocated, you know what I'm saying? Haley has this massive audience of white men who think that every mixed woman looks like Zendaya, and Adam had to get a remote job just so that people would stop gawking at him. We honestly let Michael into the group because he said he likes to lift, and we needed a bodyguard to protect us from all of the attention. Oh, look at this, Matt, 614. We love a local king, sexy. Fishbowl shows are supposed to be free, you know? So it took me a while to get used to people throwing money at us while we performed. The Nicole Scherzinger of Fishbowl's Pussycat Dolls. Now, Nathisha goes without saying. Number one, bisexual, trilingual, quadrilateral, gets all your pent-up sexual aggression going on. I mean, come on. It hasn't happened yet, but honestly, I'm waiting for the day that Michael just takes one too many scoops of protein powder. What can I say? I love the drama. Like, should he be offended about the money? Or should we just say thank you and go to the races with those crumpled $20 bills, am I right? <laughs> the eternal question. The Harry Styles of Fishbowl's One Direction. Right, yes, I, uh, I, th I think I get it. Oh, okay. What is it? I mean, I don't think I can say this out loud, but honestly, vivid imagination. And I mean, me, Prince Ali, fancy is he, Ali Ababwa. The gays and envies want this hot, sexy piece of Arabian ass, but they can't have it, no, no, no. So, I, I don't understand. It sounds like you guys were a huge success in this group. Well, listen, in this comedy space, let's just say first we laughed, and then we laughed. Everything seemed like it was going well, you know? We were funny. People loved us. We, we won Best Student Organization on campus. I mean, President Drake came up to me personally at his retirement party and said that after he saw a fishbowl show, he realized his work here was done. But like, I guess that's the thing about success, you know? People love to hate it. I guess it's true that you either die a hero or live long enough to see yourself become a sexed up little villain. Because People were starting to talk about us on campus and when we were at festivals. It wasn't about the comedy anymore. It didn't matter how funny we were. It was all about vanity and carnal desire. We were getting lost in the fame. We started losing our priorities. We even started fighting with each other. It seems like the way we looked affected everything else. Listen, it's not like we're COVID deniers or anything. 
but it's just really interesting how right as soon as I got into the group, the world couldn't even handle the idea of seeing me in person. It was like, I'm not saying causation equals correlation, it's just very interesting. It's just really convenient that the university had a mask mandate for a virus, right? It doesn't have anything to do with all of this? Right, sure. You know, there was rumors, fighting, sabotage, and, and it was everywhere, all the time. And, and I was the president, I was the sexy president, and I was supposed to have all the sexy little answers. God. I'm sorry. It was just all so difficult and and sexy. But I guess at the end of the day, um, God gives his toughest battles to his sexiest soldiers. And this goddamn battalion of sultry little minxes was not gonna go down without a fight. Nobody can say that we went down without a fight. We tried everything. We tried to make ourselves look ugly. We tried to wear ugly outfits. We disguised ourselves as frat boys to try to get the attention off of us, but even then, people were still feral for us in those unwashed basketball shorts. Once, we did a show completely in the dark, and people kept heckling us and telling us that our voices sounded like soft butter on toast. It was fucking anarchy. There were talks of staging a protest to make sure that everyone on campus knew that sexy people have the right to be funny too. But every time we were setting up in the Oval, Sister Cindy was already out there. And she just kept yelling at us, Sluts! Sluts! All of you will burn! So we had to keep rescheduling. Um, I think Ali getting into the, the group just really pushed us over the edge where we were just kind of running out of options at this point. Eh, I'm sexy. Sorry, babes. You know what? You can try and try and try again, but really, we realized we were beating a dead fish. We knew that if we really loved Fishbowl, there was only one thing we could do to help it. We had to, uh, we had to, uh, I'm sorry, I can't say it. Uh, can we take a quick break? The seniors came together, and we all agreed the best thing we could do for Fishbowl, the thing that we could do to help guarantee that we could put on free shows for years to come, was to leave. I didn't think we'd be saying goodbye like this, but you can't say we didn't pussy slay the house down boots wig mama. Now can you? I know with us leaving, Fishbowl is still going to be the sexiest improv group on campus. It's inevitable. Um, the underclassmen, they are just... They will have a fighting chance, and that's all I can really ask for. I hope the underclassmen can see the kind of career that a Zane or Niall from One Direction have and realize there is still a hope. They don't need Harry. They can still be better than Louis or Liam all on their own. Goodbye, my sweet fish. Parting is such sweet sorrow. <sighs> we hate to say goodbye, but we know you'll love to watch us leave. We love you, Fishbowl. I always knew that I wanted to leave the group in an even better position than I found it in. But I think that if someone had come up to me and said that leaving was the way that I could make things better, I'd say, damn, um, it's a sobering thought, but I've got your back.